with billions of stars in just our galaxy and billions of galaxies in the universe, it's hard to imagine that Earth is the only planet out there that can support life. But it's been tough to find other ones that can, because life needs a tricky mix of conditions, and finding potentially Earth-like planets hundreds of light years away is just plain hard. Until this week, astronomers had only found eight exoplanets that resemble our home world, the most promising of them being Kepler 186f, which was just discovered last April. And when I say resemble, I don't mean that they have trees and rainbows or Nintendo, I just mean that if you squint really, really hard and tilt your head a little, they might look like planets that could possibly have something alive on them. To be considered Earth-like, a planet needs to be small enough to be rocky, but big enough to hold onto an atmosphere to keep the planet warm and protected from radiation. But life also needs water, at least as far as we know. So that means that a planet has to orbit within its star's habitable zone, where it's just far enough away from its star to have temperatures between 0 and 100 degrees so that water won't freeze or boil away. There's a reason this habitable zone is sometimes called the Goldilocks zone, all of these conditions have to be just right. So it was pretty exciting when on January 6th, astronomers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics announced that they found eight more Earth-like exoplanets, including two of the most promising candidates yet for harboring life. Finding them, of course, was anything but easy. Exoplanets are too far away to see directly, but when they pass in front of their parent star, they block a little bit of its light. So measuring the fluctuations in light is our best way of finding them. And since 2009, NASA has been using the Kepler Space Telescope to do just that. Kepler is in what's called an Earth trailing orbit, meaning that it basically follows Earth around the sun like Mary's little lamb, monitoring the brightness of over 100,000 stars, sending huge amounts of data back to Earth every day for analysis. The Harvard researchers used a NASA supercomputer named Pleiades to plot some of Kepler's latest data into light curves, which map how much light a given star emits over time. They analyzed these fluctuations in starlight and were able to identify possible planet candidates, estimating how big they were, how often they passed in front of their stars, and how big their orbits were. Eventually, the team found eight exoplanets that fit their definition of Earth-like, two of which are taking the place of Kepler-186f as most likely to be habitable. They're called Kepler-438b and Kepler-442b. Kepler-438b has a diameter that's just 12% larger than Earth's, and astronomers figure it has a 70% chance of being rocky. Zipping around its red dwarf star every 35 days, it gets 40% more light from its star than we do, so they estimate that it has a 70% chance of being within the habitable zone. Kepler-442b on the other hand, has a diameter one-third larger than Earth's and has a 60% likelihood of being rocky. But it's further out from its parent star, which is also a red dwarf. With a 112-day orbit, it gets about two-thirds as much light as Earth does and turns out to have a whopping 97% chance of being in its star's habitable zone. Those are pretty good odds. Unfortunately, Kepler-438b is 470 light-years away and Kepler-442b is 1100 light-years away, too far using our current technology to get a closer look at either of them. So even if Elon Musk invents a warp drive tomorrow, it'll still be a really long time, if ever, before we'd know for sure if these newly found worlds are able to support life as we know it. And of course, just because a planet could support life doesn't mean that it does. But as we get better at finding exoplanets that are likely to be habitable, we grow closer to finding out what might be out there. Pretty good start to 2015. Thanks for joining me for SciShow Space News. If you want to find out how you can help, check out subbable.com slash scishow. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe. <laughs>